start off by going over some of the bulbs. And uh, mainly what you, in mounted archery, pretty much any type of bow you want to use, okay? Except you can't use a compound bow and you can't use a bow with the shell, okay? So anything without a shelf and what you're what we're looking at is basically like 1200s and earlier style bows that need to be but uh but that's what they're they're going after you know in their their style of bow this is a turkish horn bow got a horn here wood core send you back you don't have to have that i'm just going to String this one up so you can see kind of what most people use, okay? Is this type of bow, not necessarily with the horn, okay? Most people will use a laminate bow like this. What I'm getting at, I wanted to show you, doesn't have a shelf. And a lot of people have the ones when you, you first start, and they got the little plastic handles here, and they, they want to shoot. Those things come off, you can take that off, make you a handle, or just sand that handle off, and you can use that book, okay? Uh, they have some of the kids, and some of the, the people that come to our uh, clinic set the house, and um, that's all the bows they have. They don't know if they're gonna wanna do it, they don't know if they wanna, gonna wanna get into it, so they just buy a cheap bow, go to Walmart, wherever, and buy a little cheap bow, and they come out, and that's fine. Just take the handle off, and, and you got it. Um, price wise they range from about a hundred bucks for this bow up to I paid fourteen hundred dollars for this bow this bow will shoot just as good as this bow there is no difference I was shocked but the, uh, I wasn't expecting that uh, these shoot the same. The difference is if you if you feel them, the difference between this bow and this bow. See the weight and how it feels in your hand. Feel the grip and the weight. It's uh, just feels like, see, the more expensive one is really nice. It feels really good. <laughs> Shoots really good. again. The uh, the prices. As cheap as you want to go, this bow here. A lot of time went into it, but it did, but me personally, I made it and it um, got to send you off of it. This is reed arrows or uh, bamboo arrows, switch cane, whatever you want to call it. Uh, these turkey feathers that my brother killed, uh, that a friend of mine had. So. Stick cut out in the backyard, okay. <laughs> Same thing. This uh, the boat arc that I used for this is all I cut it myself. There's a lot of time that goes into it, but in action, in reality, I didn't spend anything for the boat. It's just time. If you're able to put it together, it's a lot of fun, okay. Now, if I were to buy the material to build this bow and not going out in my backyard and, and cutting the stuff, um, it would be about $100 for the stay, got about $100 worth of sinew. Um, brain tan, that's, uh, you can scrunt, barely get, probably get a, a quiver and a bow case out of one hide, but brain tan's for $200 plus got to buy it. So you're looking at buying this just for the material pushes it on up to four or five hundred dollars, you know, just the material. Uh, anyway, there you go. Spend as much as you want, little as you want. Uh, any type of bow can't have a rest. Alright. Quivers. Now they have 
tons and tons and tons of different quivers. All right, this is my wife's quiver. We started off when I used these. I had uh, it's not going to fit me, but I can show you how it, how it's going to go on. It does here, and it's a cross draw. What you do is you grab it here, and not here, pretty fast. Uh, this one. The side quiver. This is uh, what typical what the Persian Parthian, uh, some of the Scythians used. Uh, it goes here. You can look at the old plates that they have. God with the spear and the bow and all that. This is the this is the replica of that quiver that uh, that they have. I used this to compete. Whenever I went to y'all uh, y'all place and competed, this is the quiver I used. Uh, really good quiver, but you draw it you draw it here, and you use that Persian or or they got 900 million different names for it. But you just draw it like this. Started out with this. This was Julie's quiver again. It'll go right here. It's a little big quiver. You grab it. Boom. It actually comes here and straps to your leg so you can have it have it lower okay and you grab the arrow like that bring it to your bow and, uh, and uh, again guys they got back quivers they got side quivers they got quivers that strap here you come around uh, you're basically limited on your own imagination on your quiver design Okay, what kind of quiver you want. Uh, they're all legal. Depends on what kind of competition you go to. But overall, 99% of them use any bow as long as you have a shell. Use any quiver. Doesn't matter. Side, back, cross, draw. Doesn't matter. Um, pretty simple. Arrows, same thing. Wood, carbon, uh, aluminum. Any type of arrow you want. Uh, and most, and 90% of the competition. This one, this is a Ming. This is an alley bow. Uh, actually, uh, Lee bought my horse at our competition. He, he come in from China, and uh, he gifted me this bow, wow. and I, I love it. It, you it is. Gave it to me. <laughs> you said she gifted it to her. <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> no, actually what we did, we had a shoot off. I said, okay, you know, let's see who's going to, uh, to get the bow. So we strung it up, we set a target out there, and I won. <laughs> but the thing is, she got this one. I said, well, if you're getting this one, I want this one back. And she said, no. <laughs> okay, you're different locks. Again, it all depends on what you want to do. Okay. A lot of people, and you're going to tell, you're going to hear me say release. Okay, it's a habit. You talk to everybody, they're going to say, I use a thumb release. I use got a drain and release. It's not a release. A release is when you let go of the string. They're locked. It's how you lock the arrow onto the string. Okay. Technically, that's what it's called. Is they're, they're locked. All of them are good. It just depends on what you want to use them for. The thumb release, the thumb lock, when you release, in, in my thinking, and all this is my opinion, okay, so if you don't agree with it, I'm, it's okay, <laughs> all right, what you do is, you take it, just like here, and you do this with your string, you put your thumb around the string like this, on the string, you take this finger and just lock the end of your thumb. Okay? The elbow's up and your hand's kind of twist in here. Okay? That's what holds the string, the arrow to the string. If I do this, the arrow's going to fall. Do this. Okay. The plus of this lock is. You can shoot it on the left or the right hand side, it doesn't matter. Most overwhelming, vast majority of people, 90% is going to shoot them on the right. 
just because it's quicker knocking. Okay. The uh, what's good about this release is that it's really forgiving. It's hard to mess this release up. Okay. As far as torquing your string, do that if you shoot Mediterranean and you and all of a sudden you're not shooting that well anymore. Uh, do your fingers and see where your calluses are. Are your calluses even, or is your ring finger more than the rest? So what happens is if your ring finger is more than the rest, what you're doing is you're pulling harder with your ring finger. You're doing this, and a lot of people tend to do that with their string. They pull. Okay? You can torque this string and release, and your arrow will do this. But the thing is, I said that to make this point. Thumb, you got to almost purposely torque that string. You see? So if you come here and you're just putting enough pressure to hold this against, hold your arrow against the deal, you put your hand against the bow, you put your hand right, and you draw, that release is going to be pretty smooth. Okay? If you use a thumb, if you use a ring, whenever I was shooting uh, thumb, I was shooting heavier bows. They were 50, 55 pounds, some of them were 60, and I used a Manchu ring. That's even smoother on your release because what you do is, and I left my ring, I'm sorry I got in a hurry, but you, all you're doing is taking it and you're just hooking your string behind the ring. So when you come back, you just it's just real smooth. Your hand's in this position, all you got to do is just this, and boy, it's just, it's a real accurate uh, release. Uh, real smooth. Hard to mess that release up. Okay? It's real forgiving. Uh, the drawback to it for me, it's the reason why I stopped using it, was because I wanted to uh, be able to shoot multiple arrows in my draw hand. You can't do that. Okay? You either have to hold your arrows here, 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 you know, in this in this hand. Or you can hold it here like this in your fingers. Draw and do a thumb. Okay? It's slower. It's just harder to, to, to do that. Uh, that is that's that's really the sole reason why I stopped using the thumb. Other than that, if it wouldn't be for that, I would probably be using the thumb still. And I really like shooting with my ring. You have to have your thumb. Okay? So you can't hold the arrow with your thumb because you have to pull the string with your thumb. Okay? So that's the disadvantages. Very minimal disadvantages. Uh, the advantages are, are really good. Uh, so the, the soft release, which I've been using for a long time, uh, several years, I really like it. Two fingers under, one on the side. That's a slop. We'll come in, two fingers under, one on the side. It's not as forgiving as the thumb, that's a drawback. The, the plus to it is it's extremely fast. Okay, it's just a lot faster because what you're doing is coming in and you're knocking the arrow, you don't have to wrap your thumb around it. You just bring your hand back. So when you when you shoot it, it's just, and I'm just not, because I'm trying to show you. When you shoot it, it's just coming in here and it's just one motion. It's a, it's, it's a lot quicker. So uh, with thumb, you have to, it's not that much slower, but you have to come in and lock your hand and then shoot. Okay, lock your thumb around it. So, what I meant is with the slob release, I do a combination of the Native American pinch, a pinch release, and I'm calling it a Native American, it's just every culture uses the pinch. Um, and the slob is that on these light bowls like this, I can, a 30 pound to probably 40. I can pinch it, I can grab it and, and just hold the arrow and pinch, okay? That's a really smooth release. It's, it's really, 
really smooth and really, really accurate. Um, when you go up with the pinch in poundage, you do the same thing. You're pinching it, but you might have to bring your finger to the string. Or you might have to bring these three fingers like this to the string. Okay? With the slob release, or the slob lock, you come in and you can torque that string. When you start, whenever I start getting really excited, that's why you see me in the hunt, I'll get it going, and then all of a sudden, I come to the competition, I'm missing, I'm throwing arrows all over. But what it is, I just get excited, my hands get stiff, and I start torquing that string like this, and I start, you can push too hard on the arrow. You see the arrow, what it's doing? You get excited, and you do that, and your accuracy goes off. So when you're trying to make that, that 45 meter shot, right, the very, very first shot, you're pretty much going to miss, okay? But, uh, but anyway, there's so many things that you can do wrong with this release. The advantage to it, the advantage to it is that you can, you can come in and very easily shoot like this. This is that. So advantages, disadvantages. Advantages is really fast. Real versatile disadvantage is that you can you have to be you have to practice it a lot so you don't torque your string, torque your arrow, and miss. Alright, so now you have the Native American. It comes back into this when I'm shooting one at a time and I was shooting the slob. What I do is slob release, the thumb has no part in it. It's just here. Yeah, it's just only because it's usually holding it's holding arrows. <laughs> okay, the, um, the the pinch, or I'm trying to think, the Chinese used it a lot. Manchu, I think, used it. Don't quote me on that. A lot, but what they do is the same thing as the slaw, except you utilize the thumb. That stabilizes everything. When you put the thumb in there, it 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 stabilizes it. You gotta change your face. But you but what what it is is you come down and it's really fast and you can just and, and that's it, you're already there. That's that's your release, that's your lock. It's just here. And you don't have to do anything with your hand. You come in. And all you're doing is basically just pitching everything together and drawing back. So it's 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 pretty good. Uh, big advantage in that. The so next is the Mediterranean. All it is is the three finger. Okay. And you can all of these locks you can shoot on the left or the right hand side. Mediterranean you can shoot it on on the left side. What it is, is that most people that, that's used to shooting on the left hand side, what they do is, they'll put their fingers here and they roll it to keep the arrow on the bow. Guys, that's where you get your bad release. What you're doing is, you're flipping your finger down, kind of holding it on the string with your top finger, because you're on a horse. And then you, then you, you come in and you, you're rolling that string to further keep it on on the bow, okay? So, you're rolling it. If you put it on this side and you roll it, it's gonna do here. If you draw it without rolling it, okay? If you just hook your fingers here, Stay equal pressure on all your fingers and get a smooth release. You're not you're not going to roll the string, and you could do it on either side. Okay, so when you're shooting Mediterranean and you want the smoothest release and you're getting the smoothest release possible. You can shoot that on this side or this side because you're not torquing the string. You're not rolling the string. You're just hooking here, bringing it straight back, and releasing it. Now, advantages of Mediterranean, 
when you go to the to this side, to the right hand side, when you I mean left hand side when you're right-handed, is that you can bring it and you can use the tip of your arrow as a point of aim. Okay, you can actually point the tip of your arrow and you can use it as a reference point when you're when you're shooting. And uh, that's an advantage. It's it's more accurate if you get a if you or I'm going to say it's more accurate, but it's, it's pretty accurate. And you, you're not shooting fully instinctive where if you're on this side, you're looking right at the target and you're just drawing up, it's like throwing a baseball. On this side, pretty much you're doing pretty much the same thing, but you can see the arrow a little better. So you're not actually looking using the tip because you're not going to be able to do that on the horseback. On ground archery, you probably could. Horseback is harder. So you're not really looking at the tip of your arrow because it will be moving a little. But uh, you're looking at the target, but you're more aware of the arrow. You can see the arrow better, okay? Disadvantages of it is that it's, it's a little slower, okay? Now when I say it's a little slower, you can shoot this three arrows in what they're doing a second and a half. So it's not slow, <laughs> okay? For most people, it's a little slower because it's easier to do this, okay? The, uh, instead of threading it through. Disadvantage you thread it through, you can hit your hand, you can hit your bow, okay? But it's still really fast. I'm here, I'm about to shoot my knockless arrow. You come here, you hold it, you just pull your arrow out, thread it through. You see, same thing, pull your arrow up, thread it through. Okay, that's one way of doing it. That is the advantages and disadvantages of Mediterranean. So I'm going to show you some further advantages using a really short bow. Okay, this bow. This is the reason. This bow was the reason why I went back to Mediterranean. And uh, <clears throat> I was using a pinch with it, but um, the shorter, the shorter your bow is, the less cast you have. You know what I'm talking about? It doesn't. You, you get a bow once you get past uh, 48 inches, 52 inches. Well, actually, about 54 inches. Uh, your bow starts to lose cast, so you have to go up. It's not going to shoot as hard as a 39-inch bow isn't going to shoot as fast as a 54-inch bow at the same arrow, same weight. Your bow doesn't store as much energy. So to get the same feet per second, you have to go up on your weight. So my pinch. The pinch, I started off with the pinch and it was pretty good. I could use a Native American type pinch, okay? And shoot it, shoot it just fine. But I can't put my arrows in my hand like this. <laughs> Nobody does this, okay? You, you don't see a whole lot of archers, horses. I haven't seen any horseback horses do it. Uh, I'm gonna do it. I'm determined, <laughs> I'm determined. It's been two years, I am determined. Determined. I'm gonna do. I'm the same. I can shoot just as heavy of a bow with my thumb as I can with Mediterranean. Okay. Do you want to hold arrows? I want to hold arrows. See, the thing is, is that the if when you utilize a thumb ring, and that's what the thumb ring was for. They're shooting 80 to 100, 120 pound bow. So, of course, that much weight on your thumb. Shoot a 70 pound bow with just a bare thumb. And uh, I've done that, 60 pounds, uh, 65 pounds with my bare thumb. It's all right, build up the callus. Pretty soon that callus makes a little ridge and the callus goes with the arrow. I've actually done that. I pulled, the, pulled my callus off, ripped and then I said, okay, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm gonna be smart like they did, you know, a thousand years ago and use a thumb ring. <laughs> That's why they use the thumb ring, okay? So, again, I switched back to Mediterranean. Short bow, 
Which the shorter bow you got, the least cast you have, the less forgiving it is. They're harder to shoot, way harder to shoot. Okay? If you can't draw them back, it's more. But they're really maneuverable and they look cool. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, with the shorter bows, you don't have to thread it through. And you don't have to thread it through with the longer bow. But it's easier with the shorter bow in the Mediterranean. With this, you just come here. You see, you don't have this much of a bow. But you're coming up, you're shooting right here, and you have to come in, tilt the bow down, then thread it across. Okay? Just a little short bow. So it's, it's just nothing in the way. Is that the only thing that you're considering when you're doing um, the draw weight of the, when you're looking at a draw weight of the bow? Are you also looking at what you can actually do? The draw weight of my bow is 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 um, that when you have a heavier bow, you can't torque the string as much. Lighter bows okay. you can torque the string on them, like everybody's using 30, 35 pound bows, but you can torque them and you can twist that string a lot easier. The heavier bow you get, the less you're going to twist that string. It's not going to allow it. So it makes your release a lot smoother. Actually. Is that why you need to shoot as heavy as you can pull? The reason, the reason why I'm going heavier with this, this is strictly cast. Because of the, the length of the bow? Strictly, yeah. And, uh, because of the length of the bow. If I'm going to shoot this, I have to get, I don't want on the hunt, 45 meter shot. Right. Almost 50 yards, your first shot. You don't want to have to shoot like this and have your arrow go shoot. <laughs> to be accurate, you want a flat shooting bow. So to get this bow to shoot as flat as this bow, or this or this bow, this one's uh, 43, 45 pounds, 48 pounds, this bow shoots extremely fast, extremely flat. But to get this one to shoot like this one, I've got to get 10 pounds, at least 10 pounds, 20 pounds heavier, okay? So that's why I went, that's the reason. If it wouldn't be for that, I would be shooting 35, 40 pounds, one day. okay? Uh, but that's the only reason, just because I needed to reach the target, I've right. got to have it. And uh, so I went to Mediterranean for several reasons, because I'm shooting this type of boat. Comes here, it's just as fast, I can load it, Okay, I can pull the weight on it. I can use the tip of my arrow as a point of, as a reference, as a point of aim. Okay, that's all the advantages of it. Another advantage, another thing is, you notice I have no knocks on the string. I don't have a knock point. So when I come in to load it, I can just bring it straight in. I can get pretty much the same spot every time. You can do that with any of the releases. The only difference is when I'm holding three arrows in my hand here and shooting on this side, I have to, when I load it, I have to come in, pump it up against the knock point, and then shoot with that slob release. Come in, pump it against the knock point. Okay? But, but with, the, with the Mediterranean, you don't have to bump it against the knock point. Because you have your other finger on top. I can go straight in, hold it just like this. I can hold six arrows. So doing the math, it takes me about a second, a full second, to grab three more arrows, come up to a second and a half to reload. So I go one, two, three. That's two seconds. A full second, that second almost two seconds get three more arrows and come in and go one, two, three, where if I hold them like this, six arrows, I'll have to reload. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's what I'm hoping for. In theory. Some of these guys, some of these guys that are still in their 20s and 30s and uh, can We'll be able to do that. I'm 54 years old, so I'm hoping I can still do it. My reflexes will let me do it. But uh, that's the whole reason. And you see, I'm telling you all this for one thing. Y'all think about what y'all want to do. What do you want to accomplish in mounted archery? But you make up your own mind. 
when you grip your bow, shooting the thumb, and I'm assuming that y'all probably going to shoot on this side of the bow. You put your bow in your hand just like this. You see that meaty part of your hand? You want it in front of that bow. You see how that is? So when you close your hand, you're right here. And you see how my bow is, my bow's not like this, it's like this. Okay? And what you want to do is take this and go tight. You want to grip the pinky tight. Okay? You're going to whiten up with it. Okay? Your ring finger is going to be tight. Pinky is your tightest finger, though. Your middle finger, not so much. It's kind of floating. Maybe have to grip it a little, but it's kind of floating. Your thumb and your forefinger is loose. Okay. The reason for that, y'all heard of Katra, Botar? When you release and your grip is right, your bow will automatically go to the left and down. So it doesn't hit the arrow. I mean, the arrow doesn't hit the side of the bow. And this is a lighter bow. Let me go to heavy bow. You can see it more. Okay, because it's, it's going to have more force. See what my bow did? Now I'm not making that bow do that. If you start trying to force it, you'll start moving your hand before you release. Sometimes. Okay, it's potential to do that. If you just grip it, when it's tight here, Tight. What it does, it lets the bow fall in your hand like this. So you grip it tight, a little looser, a little looser, a little looser, and then when you release, when you release it, let's get where y'all can see me. When you release it, you see what the bow did? That the bow just did that. I I didn't make the bow go forward and down. Okay. The bow just done that. What that does is it takes the arrow spine and all of that out of the equation. As long as you're using uh, an arrow that's not really, really, really light spine, it doesn't matter. Like Mediterranean, when you shoot around that bow, the arrow hits the side of the bow, does this, and it straightens out, then it'll go on. Same thing here, if you don't have any bow torque, if you're holding this bow like a modern archer does, the palm here, like you would if you had a pistol grip on it, the bow is going to stay stationary, yet your arrow is going to have to go around that bow. It sits the side of the bow and it does this. That's the reason why modern arrows, a modern bow that has the pistol grip will have a sight window cut out in it. Okay, so you don't have that archer paradox. You don't have that bending around the bow. Okay, these don't have that. You've got to bend around the bow. The arrow straight down the middle of the string. Whenever you use Katra, it almost eliminates that completely. So when you come in and you shoot, the arrow, as soon as you release, your bow is doing this, so your arrow actually does this. So you get a lot, a lot smoother shot. And you notice I'm not, I'm not, if you, if you do this, and you come up, and you shoot, and you bring it all the way back like this, then you have to bring your bow all the way back up. Okay? It's a little slower. Not that that's a bad thing, but if you just do that, you see where it goes at? I'm putting those. I'm not way back here, but I'm going to bring a bow back. I'm just, I'm just right here. I just come up. Okay. So if you're, if you're all of a sudden getting, Inaccurate, stop. 
you go back in your hand, grip this, it's in your grip. If you're doing it correctly, see how straight that arrow is? It's straight in line with me. Okay? I'm going to do it without using it. You see the arrow, how it's tipped to the right? Because it kick, you hit the, you hit the bow in it, tip. Now I'm going to use Kaiko again. See how straight it is? Now I'm going to come back, loosen it up, I'm going to tighten them. I'm going to do just reverse like you do now. Tighten my top fingers and hold it like a pistol grip. Yeah, come, come look at me down.